what is it guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and welcome to day 58 of the 2017-2018 NBA season. You guys already know the drill. You guys already know the words I'm about to say. We got a few things to talk about today, so let's just get right into it. But first, a quick word from this video sponsor. Nah, I'm just kidding. Lego. Real quick recap. The Celtics were without Al Horford last night, and they were still able to get the 124-118 to 118 win over the Denver Nuggets. Kyrie Irving returned for Boston after missing his last game and lit it up with 33 points while Jalen Brown had 26. Gary Harris had 36, and Jamal Murray had 28 for the Denver Nuggets. That was pretty much the game in a nutshell. The best news for the Celtics fans wasn't that the Celtics won. They were heavily favorite to win that game so it was no surprise at all that they did win the best news was the progress that Gordon Hayward has made in his recovery as he is no longer in the boot take a look That was really fast. It's been less than two months since the injury occurred, so he is progressing really freaking fast. Now, Celtics fan, don't get too hyped up about this because he is still a ways off from being able to come back. First, they have to make sure that he can keep the boot off. You don't want him to be like, all right, boots off, let's get straight into rehab, go run a couple laps. They're gonna wait and monitor for like a week just to make sure that he really is ready to have the boot completely and permanently off. And after that comes a long rehab process that could take a few months, which is interesting because it's still December, right? Normally rehabbing takes like three to four months at most. The NBA season doesn't end until April, around five months from now. So with just that timetable, technically he should be fine towards the end of the regular season, right? Meaning that he could be able to come back. Right? Once again though, people are going to say that Gordon Hayward already ruled out the possibility of coming back this year. Back on November 1st, he said, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm not gonna be able to help the team on the court this year. After that, news articles came out claiming that that was Hayward's announcement, that he will not return to the court this season. But I don't think that was actually a declaration from Hayward that saying that he wasn't 100% coming back. I think that was just an emotional response, saying, dang, I can't believe I'm not gonna be able to help my team on the court this year, and not an 100% saying, yo, I'm not coming back this year. It's two different things. Because at that time, no one knew how fast he would recover from this. And to add on to this even more, a couple of days ago, Gordon Hayward said that a possible return to the court this season is still in the back of his mind. It's definitely in the back of my mind. I'm definitely pushing to get back as fast as I can while making sure that I still have a lot of good years of basketball in me. And coming back early and hurting something else is not part of that plan. So I'm making sure that when I come back, I'm 1000% confident in myself and my leg. I hope more so than anything I can play this season that would be awesome but that's not something I'm stressing about. I'm stressing about what I can do today to help myself get better. While it's more than possible that Gordon Hayward suits up for the Boston Celtics this year, I wouldn't go as far to say that it's likely that he suits up for the Boston Celtics this year. It's all about timing at this point. A lot of it will depend on what part of the season he feels he is ready to come back and play. If he feels he's ready to come back and play this season. Because once a player is back and ready to play again, you can't expect him to be the player that he was was right away before he got injured. It's gonna take him some time to get back to that level. So let's say it's still in the regular season. Six, seven, or eight games left to play. Gordon Hayward says he's ready to come back. He feels like he's ready to play. At that point, I would say, why not let him use this time to get warmed up? By then the standings will probably be set in stone. You know you're either gonna get the first or the second seed if you're the Boston Celtics. And if he could use those six, seven, or eight games to get back in the basketball shape and be closer to his normal self, by the time the playoffs start, then sure, go for it. But if there's only like a game or two left or the playoffs already started and he's like, you know what, I think I'm ready to come back. I'm just saying it ain't worth it. There's no point because you don't want to bring a player back in the heat of the playoff. That will probably be the worst time for a player to return from an injury that kept them out the entire season. So with all of the timing at this point, but still the fact that he's out of a boot and is making such great progress this fast is a great sign. Same Houston Rockets team. They said, Chris Paul ain't gonna do nothing for this Rockets team. They said, well, 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 here we are, 26 games into the season, and I don't think anyone is saying that now. Do you understand that the Houston Rockets are undefeated 
with Chris Paul playing. They haven't lost a game and most of their games haven't even been close. Do you know why that is? Because these teams cannot keep up with the Rockets offensively. Last year, when the Houston Rockets didn't have CP3, other teams stood more of a chance because Houston would have to sit Harden on the bench. Granted, it wasn't like the Rockets couldn't operate at all with Harden out of the game. They still had Eric Gordon and Lou Williams out there getting buckets without Harden, but there is no doubt that they were a better team with a great player like Harden in the game. This year, they still have Eric Gordon, one of the best six men in the NBA, but now when Harden is out of the game, you have Chris Paul in the game, roasting and toasting the other team's second unit. That doesn't seem fair, and it makes it so the Houston Rockets offense doesn't skip a beat. Now, on top of that, there will be games like last night, where James Harden might not be having the best game of his career. Only 21 points, 8 of 22 shooting from the field, and 8 assists, a very volume shooting game for James Harden. If this were last year, it is very possible that the Houston Rockets lose this game to the Charlotte Hornets, but with Harden having an off night, it's no big deal now because you still got freaking Chris Paul. And he was able to take over the game and then some, scoring 31 points on 10 of 18 shooting, 11 assists, and 7 rebounds. I'm telling you, Chris Paul on this Rockets team just isn't fair. Paul George was booed and the crowd chanted honey nut cheerios at carmelo anthony i take it that pacers fans just don't like the oklahoma city thunder too much huh well in his first game back in indiana paul george struggled heavily carmelo anthony continued to struggle and even though he had a triple double Russell Westbrook struggled as well, but Steven Adams didn't as he was the one that come through for OKC and pull them to the 100 to 95 win over Indy. 23 points and 13 rebounds for Adams last night and it seems like whenever he gets more involved in their offense, the Thunder win. Look, I'm just saying. Oladipo struggled for Indiana too last night though. He only had 19 points on 9 of 26 shooting. Progress. Bulls. Progress. The Bulls are progressing no it's it's too early to say that is, is it yeah no it, it has to be but but is it really chicago has not won four straight games and the key to them winning these games has to do with a couple of things first chris dunn has been playing really really well and i'm gonna say it right now he is for sure going to be the point guard of the future for that team but it also had to do with the return of broken face miritich except for his first game back miritich has been flat out amazing for chicago so far this year he had 29 points and 9 rebounds last night in the Bulls win over the Jazz, and 24 the game before that, and 19 the game before that, averaging just under 20 points per game, shooting the ball 57% from the floor and 52% from deep. I don't expect Chicago to keep winning like they have been. I don't think anyone expects Chicago to keep winning like they have been. It's in the Bulls' best interest if they don't keep winning like they have been. But I gotta say that come next year, this will be a very fun time team to watch. You'll have Dunn, Marketing, Miritich, Levine, plus whoever they draft. It's going to be a lot of fun to see this team grow. 103 to 100 was the final score last night as Donovan Mitchell dropped 32 for Utah. I think this Pelicans team is just an awful matchup for the Bucks. Look, Milwaukee just doesn't have anyone who can contest with Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Granted, the Pelicans don't have anyone to stop Giannis, but New Orleans is just too strong down low for Milwaukee as Davis and Cousins combined for 51 points to get the 115 to 108 win over Giannis and his 32 points. Bucks just need a better starting center. Benson would be solid off the bench, but he shouldn't be a stunning center in the NBA. That's just a fact. Well, a good captain always goes down with his ship. That's what they say, at least. As after the Grizzlies lost once again last night, 93-87 to to the Washington Wizards, Marc Gasol said that no matter how bad it gets, he will never request a trade from the Memphis Grizzlies. I get the whole concept of wanting to be loyal to the city and to the organization, but I just have to imagine that at some point, he will want to win, right? right is that too crazy to believe and if he's not going to request a trade that must mean that he's planning on re-signing with them in a couple of years too right because like what would be the point of not asking for a trade right now if you're just going to leave in a year and a half from now anyways it wouldn't make any sense why not just get out right now it just doesn't make any sense anyways john wall returned from washington last night still didn't look like john wall though only had 13 points and four assists while bradley beal had 18 points and seven assists for the 
the Wizards. After losing their last game to the Clippers, the Raptors bounced back last night to beat the Phoenix Suns 115 to 109 behind DeMar DeRozan and his season high 37 points and 7 rebounds. Not really much else to say about this game everyone already knew what the outcome was going to be. Watch out now, the Clippers have themselves a little winning streak going on here. They did only beat the Magic last night who were without Aaron Gordon, but hey, a win is a win at this point. Take them how you can get them. DeAndre Jordan has been playing better now that Milos is back, so he has someone they can set him up with a lot. He had 16 points and 20 rebounds last night, and Lou Williams continues to be great for LA off the bench. He had 31, 106 to 95 was the final score. They Damian Lillard was quiet all night long for the Blazers last night until they needed him the most. Dane scored 7 of his 18 points in the final 3 minutes to let the Blazers do a comeback 102-95 win over the Miami Heat. And with Dame having such an off night, it was up to CJ McCollum to keep the Blazers as close as possible. He dropped 28. That wraps up all the action from last night though. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by clicking this little annotation card thing right here. Just remember, the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys selected Kristaps Porzingis and his 37 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 blocks as your player of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Make sure to leave a like on it as well as subscribe to the channel for more daily NBA news and highlights. But until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets, Team STC, and I'm out of here. Peace!